Hello, hello, Captain. Uh, nice to meet you today. Nice to meet you. How long have you been here in Dnipro? I have been in Dnipro, I think, two days. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I know that you lived here for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. When the war has already started, when have you first come to Dnipro? I first, I first came to Dnipro in in uh, twenty seventeen to visit. Mm -hmm. And I was here for about two weeks, and I interviewed for a, a job, and then returned um, in 2019. And then I lived here for, I think, about nine months. Okay, so you have never been here before the war started in 2014. So you were in the war right. and now you're again in yes, the war. Yes, yeah. Right, yeah. So you don't know yeah. this whole new project. I was, I was, I was in, the, in the less extreme war. Okay. Um, yeah. And can you compare your feelings? Do you see any differences or is it the same or different? Well, it's hard to say because I haven't really seen a uh, city center mm -hmm. or the places that it used to be. Uh, I've seen some differences. There, there seem to be, uh, I don't know, more... Uh, or maybe I'm just not remembering correctly, but the streets are not in good shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some places that are closed that were that used to be open. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, it's hard to say. I will know more at the end of my visit. I will be here for five days. Mm -hmm. So I, I will be looking for this. I'll be, I'll be looking to see what's different. I saw one improvement. There was a, yeah. a, there's, there's a <laughs> okay. there's an old building near, near uh, Rocket Park. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that I, the first time I came here, I admired. I thought, that's nice. I hope someone does something to save this building. Mm -hmm. And now it's a Varus. It's a supermarket. Okay. Yeah. So somebody did <laughs> so something. So somebody did something nice, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about people? Do you see different face expressions? Or mm -hmm. maybe people have changed somehow, do you feel like? Well, of course. I was just visiting people who are displaced and mm -hmm. were here. And they... They look like they've had a hard time, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I see my friends, mm -hmm. and I know that they're stressed, mm -hmm. so I, I can tell that. Um, so yeah, I see a little, I see a little stress mm -hmm. happening to people. Yeah. And how do you personally feel? Because you came firstly in Kiev, in the middle of the bombings, when the bombings had started, and yeah. uh, right now we have the air alert on, so it's beeping yeah. all the bombs are beeping. But how do you personally feel now? It's it's definitely a war zone, mm -hmm. and that makes that makes ner makes me nervous, and I worry about the alerts. But what can you do? Mm -hmm. What can you do? And of course, most of the time, it's nothing. So it's really hard to, uh, on one hand, take it so seriously that you run down to the shelter every time there's, there's a, an alarm. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you're taking your chances if you don't. But most people take their chances. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've only been here a while, and already I'm just taking my chances. You know, the, the alarm goes off at night, and I roll over mm -hmm. and go to sleep. Okay. Or maybe I will relocate to a place with two walls you know, mm -hmm. uh, and sleep there. But I I only went to the shelter once. It was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is it uh, cold? Basement cold it was, it was it, well in Kiev. It was the metro. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So. And and mm -hmm. it's very cold. Mm -hmm. And I would need to bring a blankets and a pad to sleep on. It's a lot to carry. It's about a uh, it's about a ten minute walk from my house. Mm -hmm. So what about when I'm Am I supposed to put the blanket over my head while I walk in? Like, it's, and, it's, and it's very dark, you know. There's there's no there's very little lighting outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a big thing I've noticed. Um, yeah, I guess that's one thing I noticed when I got here was that uh, everything got dark mm -hmm. and people just went, went went inside. Okay, and have you experienced any blackouts? Because uh, right now we were bombed uh, multiple times, and this was yeah. mostly about the electricity, about power plants. Right, right. Have you experienced any of it? I have not. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how I've not seen it because everybody I've talked to has had blackouts. I mm -hmm. have not personally had one that I know. It may have gone out during the night, and I didn't realize it. But uh, so far. No, although I have imposed my own blackouts. Mm -hmm. When I go to bed, I, I unplug the, all the devices, including the internet. Mm -hmm. 
and I turn all the lights off. And uh, I always, always keep just one light bulb on. Mm -hmm. And I've been washing my laundry by hand. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saving, you're saving. Yeah, yeah. That's why I try to save electricity. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's the goal uh, from the government to save as much as possible. And mm -hmm. right now we do it for only a recording purpose. And actually we write something also on the slide, but uh, it's all electricity saving. And otherwise uh, the washing machines you don't need to turn on before the night uh, comes or so the anything electrical you need to save basically. Right. So the, is that right that the uh, electricity it's better to run your laundry at night? Is yes. That, is that the yes. deal? Okay. So there are twice. Uh, there are two peak hours a day, and uh, the first one is in the morning, starting from seven till nine, I think. So this is the peak hour when everybody is going to work. So everybody is turning on something. Mm -hmm. and the second one is when everybody comes from work. It is uh, from five uh, to nine, basically, or they ask us not to uh, do anything till eleven. So this uh, two big uh, spots when you need to save everything to turn off uh, whatever you can turn off. Yeah. And then at night, uh, usually nobody uses electricity. That's why it's mm -hmm. uh, easier on the network. So basically there is uh, no electricity, but power plants are working for 40%. That's mm -hmm. why you need to yeah. save uh, and you need to distribute it evenly within the day so, that's, 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 so they can cope with it. Mm -hmm. well, it's hard. I, I think they're purchasing more electricity from Europe, but it's more mm -hmm. expensive. Which is going to be hard on Ukrainians. Yeah, so that's exactly this. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, right now they are only agreeing on purchasing it. They don't purchase. So mm -hmm. right now Ukraine can handle it. But again, we have more text uh, yesterday. You didn't hear it, so you're lucky actually. But we had a big explosion also on this on, on the left bank, and mm -hmm. people died. So uh, and it was uh, hit by anti missile in the air. So this rocket was flying to the power plant. Oh really? Yes. Well, that's why it hit the, the uh, gas station because yes. it was misdirected. Uh, it was misdirected and maybe it was hit by it. Yes, so it was mm. poor chance. So basically, mm. you are not when you stay at home, you are not targeted intentionally. Right. You can be uh, a target if the anti missile system works and it just fails on your head, mm. or it also um, like it's a big danger if, for example. Um, you are next to something and the rocket is not precise. So it can be like right. 100 to 300 meters or 1 kilometer because mm -hmm. nothing is ever since it can fly. So yeah. there's yeah. also the tension. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so I cannot imagine them intentionally trying to kill me in my house with them. <laughs> then we don't rock it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it really, it, it, it just makes me angry. And I'm sure it, has, it does to you. And I'm sure this been, it's been going on for a long time. So maybe you're not that aware of it. but. It, <laughs> It just the idea that death can come from the sky yeah. and hurt me or some friend or, or destroy some nice building, you know, that mm -hmm. that's really uh, it's a violation. Yeah, it's like a meteorite. It's like <laughs> meteorite, you know, the things flying from this open space on Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so like meteors, yeah. Meteors, going yeah, going, yeah, going meteors. out for a walk in a meteor shower. Yeah, know, that's right? it. That's, that's how we feel here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And I'm sure it has an effect on people. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend, uh, Natali, whose parents live in uh, Harkin, mm -hmm. uh, went there and she came back saying that uh, people are very depressed mm -hmm. and it's really shuts down there. I mean, there, there blackouts everywhere and at mm -hmm. night, no, no lights at all. Yeah, we hear the same. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. And uh, if somebody wants to come to Ukraine, some foreigners, do you have any advice for them? Not now. Okay. <laughs> probably probably not, not a great idea. Uh, although I think the West is probably a little safer. Cuba's probably worse. I wouldn't want to give advice because I, I got advice. Oh, everything was normal in Cuba. Yeah. And I made my plans to travel. And I, I, I knew that it was it gotten worse. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I really wanted to come because I want to, uh, oh, I had some things to bring. Mm -hmm. and, and I had uh, also, I have to renew my residency permit. Mm -hmm. And I know if I don't do that now, it's going to be much harder later yeah. to get a new one. So I, I wanted to come. And I wanted to see friends. I wanted mm -hmm. to say hello to you yeah. and bring you some things. Which Thank you yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, But I think giving you advice now, we don't know what's going to happen. It's very, mm -hmm. it's very, it's very changeable. And mm -hmm. that, that's another big worry. That these, these people are, are very frustrated. Yeah. And they're losing. Yeah. So they're doing desperate things. And, and brutal things. So there's the risk of running into a brutal thing if you come right now. So basically, don't come. Yeah. <laughs> don't come. Yeah. Don't come now. Please come but late. Yeah. 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 
But there's but it's it's still the same beautiful country. I was I was so enjoying the, the trip over here, which we, we left Keith at dawn and the sun was coming up and the the fields and the yellow uh, foliage mm-hmm. was just beautiful. I, I, all I could do is watch out the window. It was very hard to turn away and get do some work. Yeah. And how do people enroll the, um, like, what is the attitude uh, in America? So yeah, from America, from the, obviously it's certain part of America. So do people aware that uh, what's going on or what do people think about the war? Does it concern anyone? They, I've never had a conversation longer than five minutes mm-hmm. with anyone in America about it. They lose interest. They want to talk about something else. They're aware of it. They're they're um, they're on your side, mm-hmm. but they. It's not constantly. It's frustrating for me because me, I'm thinking about it all the time, and they don't think about it all the time, which which is um, good word for you, off putting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, you know, why? What's why? Where are your priorities? And the things that they think about to me seem very insignificant. Uh, but it's the kind of thing that you, you know, the sociological, political, uh, cultural things that you think about when you're in a country that's not under attack. You know, yeah. that's, that's yeah. what it's like living in a free country. That's what you want to live like in Ukraine. Yeah. You would love Obviously. to sit. You would love to sit there and have and have conversations over coffee about. Um, and all those those kind of social issues yeah. and the latest movies, but uh, it's coming. You'll get there. Okay. Okay. And do you have any message to the viewers that they want to say anything to anyone for what was? Um, if you're in a position to to donate, mm-hmm. I think that, that would, it's very helpful. Uh, a little bit goes a long way here. You know the uh, it's the cost of things are very, very low. Mm-hmm. So a, lo- a little bit of money, of Western money, goes a long way here. Mm-hmm. So please donate if, if you're able to. We had a conversation earlier about whether it's a good idea to send material things. Mm-hmm. And some things, yes, like first aid supplies, uh, mm-hmm. bandages, uh, tourniquets, um, those things are good. For other things like warm clothing, better to, better to send money with them buy it here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming here, even the Dnipro, which is uh, so basically close to Warsaw. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, Bill was surprised when I said this is the road to Donetsk and it's like uh, less than two hours drive. It's 200 kilometers yeah, it from was, here. It, when I saw that, when I saw the road and it's a very straight road. <laughs> yeah. I said, boy, yeah, we're, we're yeah. close. I could, I could be there. Or just I could probably walk there. <laughs> <laughs> don't drive it. Don't, don't walk it more. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Yeah. And thank you, and, and thank you for all the work you're doing there. You've, you've done an amazing job. You're, you're a hero. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right. okay. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope we'll meet under better circumstances. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you for watching.